Hey guys, uh, so I was going to do a different video today, but uh, I ended up banging my foot up. Uh, just something stupid happened, so uh, uh, I'm just going to take you through a back workout that I'm doing in the home gym. Hey guys, uh, so I was going to do a different video today, but uh, I ended up banging my foot up. Uh, just something stupid happened, so uh, uh, I'm just going to take you through a back workout that I'm doing in the home gym. Um, I'll show you a couple of things that I, I don't know, I, I made a cable machine or a cable pulley out of a clothesline, I can show that. <laughs> Uh, but anyway guys, I hope uh, you uh, enjoy the workout. Okay, before we get into it, so our first exercise is going to be a lap pull down. I made a pull down machine. Yes. Now the weight feels completely different than 100 pounds in the gym does for some reason. I think it's only because there's this like one pulley mechanism here. So it's changing the weight. Um, it's a clothesline. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just kind of mounted it. And uh, yeah, it's effective to use as a cable machine uh, for pull downs, rows, straight arm pull down. So the first three exercises for back, I'm going to do are going to consist of this pulling machine. So yeah, if you do have a clothesline laying around and you have some weights, you can definitely make a pulley machine. Um, food for thought. All right, so I've uh, added a band, because uh, I could definitely add more plates to that. But I find like one of the easiest things to do is use a band to overload it a little bit more. So the band will give you I don't know what they're registered for. The 40 pound uh, band, or the, uh, the orange bands, I think are like 60 to 140 or something like that. I know, I don't really count the weight. It's just, it makes it feel a lot harder. So anyway, uh, lap pull downs. You'll notice I changed the angle on this just because I'm, gonna, I'm trying to simulate more of an up and down. Now in order to get proper leverages here, I need to like be on a diagonal. So I'm just trying to picture myself what it would be like here. Instead, it's gonna be like that a little bit. Um, anyway, here we go. What I did here is I just uh, put together kind of like a, uh, almost like a, a mace or something. Um, I just grab one end of it and uh, it really works like the brachialis. Um, so what I've been doing is just negatives with it. 
all the way down, full extension, and then up. Now, I wouldn't do more than like five or six of these. They're actually really hard, but uh, I'll get into, I'll superset every movement with some form of forearm training. curl what I did is just took a rope like an eye hook and I have a, I sawed a dowel I screwed the hook into the dowel like that tie the rope and then just uh, hung a couple weights from it and then I support my forearms on the squat rack I built I just put my arms over the over the bar I find uh, that's kind of a good strategy to really overload the forearms because if you're just holding it out straight in front of you like this, your uh, your shoulders are gonna take a lot of work too there. But if you wanna overload your forearms, if that's the goal, then why put your shoulders in the equation because your shoulders will fail first. So just isolate your forearm. All right, so no forearm superset with this. Next uh, exercise is pull-ups. So looking, <coughs> The, the, the plan says 4 for 15 is what I'm going for, but with the uh, fat grips, it's probably going to make it a little harder. And uh, my forearms are pretty trashed right now, so. Fat grips on, uh, I think it's around 30 pounds, uh, maybe 27 pounds, and uh, yeah, definitely makes it harder. So, uh, that, and then I'm supersetting with uh, wrist curls right here. So, I'll do those. Okay guys, so just finished. That was long, that was like two hours. I think it's because I was like filming as I was going, but it was two hours. Um, yeah, 
so guys, I hope you enjoyed. I mean, I know, I know it's, uh, it's difficult. We, we're all thrown through a loop with the situation that's going on. I do think you can still get some fitness stuff done at home. So some of the things I've been really trying to think about, and I was going to do a video uh, today on something else, but again, I busted my foot up. Um, it was basically uh, going to be talking about, you know, what are things you can effectively do at home. One is body weight training. Um, I think it's, you know, push-ups, squats, lunges, if you really tempo it, it's good. You can really improve your cardio right now. Um, if you weren't doing cardio, give cardio a hook. Uh, you can also improve your flexibility. Uh, if you weren't <laughs> doing flexibility training, I would say do flexibility training. And then uh, some of the things that you can more effectively overload body weight wise is abdominals. So you could do a ton of ab training as well as um, it's a great opportunity to get away from eating out. Uh, you don't really have the opportunity to do it. So foods are cooked at home so you can easily get into a calorie deficit uh, if you just get a workout in and then commit to one thing of training. Just try to get activity in, you know, 30 minutes a day or something like that. But if you like started taking up uh, speed walking or jogging or something like that and you uh, were focusing on getting in um, like a, a good number of calories but you're in deficit, you can easily back off stuff, especially, uh, um, you know, with all the downtime. So take advantage of it, folks, and it does suck, uh, but um, it is important to keep your fitness. Um, it strengthens your immune function, staying active, it improves your lung function, all these things like stay active, stay healthy, eat well, and stay safe. All right, guys, catch you later.